Welcome to Virtual Humans Lecture 5.2, Learning-Based Registration. So in this lecture, we will continue with the exact same problem as before. This is um, given a point cloud. We want to fit simple and deform simple beyond the space of the model to explain um, a given scan. This is what is called as 3D alignment or 3D registration. And we've seen how to do this like in the classical sense by means of ICP and optimization. And in this lecture, we'll see how we can use learning to make this um, fitting process more robust and more reliable. So for this lecture, let me con introduce a concept which is um, simple plus D, um, which extends simple to model details of clothing and hair. So remember that simple was adding a set of post blend shapes to model, I'm sorry, shape blend shapes to model shape identity and post blend shapes to model post dependent defects. And um, at the end, we were applying this kinematic chain rotations in order to articulate the body. Now, the problem of simple is that it does not model clothing. And so the question is how we can extend simple in a simple way to model clothing. Well, the easiest thing we can do is to add a set of displacements D that are gonna model personal details and clothing. So essentially you would go from a, an undressed body in the canonical pose to a clothed body, including hair and facial details in the canonical pose. So notice that D here is not parametrized by any latent parameters, like some parameters that encode the clothing. These are the full um, matrix of displacement. So this has a lot of degrees of freedom. And um, essentially you need to be close to the data because this is very under constraint. It's not fully a model of clothing. We will see how to do this in future lectures. This is just over parameterizing the model so that it has more expressive power. By the way, this idea of adding a set of displacements here on the base mesh of simple, it's almost equivalent to um, this idea of letting the vertices of a registration be as close to the data while being close to the model, because this allows these vertices to deviate from the model. And um, that essentially has the same effect as adding a displacement field on top of the um, simple model with D. So these two models are, these two formulations are very much um, equivalent. So we motivated finding registrations as a key ingredient to train a body model. And we saw that in the previous lecture. However, there's other applications beyond um, training a body model that require fitting simple and in particular computing registrations from scans. So for example, if you wanna find the correspondences between two scans so that you can identify different corresponding parts of, of different um, body parts, what you can do is you can fit a single template to each scan such that you're implicitly creating a correspondence map between the two scans because you can always go from one scan to the simple template and from the simple template to the other scan, creating a correspondence loop between the two scans. So that's one way of obtaining correspondences by fitting simple to scans. You might have a stream of depth data coming from Kinect and you might be interested in tracking um, the body and shape motion from this um, depth stream. This is basically a, a frame by frame registration problem or for example, you might be interested in taking a scan and animating it with a skeleton. And in order to do this, you need to fit the simple model to this um, point cloud. So all these applications require fitting simple to scans. And that's why it's an important problem. And we will see in this lecture how to do this um, effectively and how to learn some bits of this registration process from training data. So we've seen that fitting um, 
simple or in this lecture i will refer to simple plus d2 scans um using icp requires solving an objective function that looks a little bit like this so essentially this was um having different terms and what is important is to notice that this term which is called the scan to mesh distance essentially computes the distance between every point in the scan s to every the closest point in the registration and this essentially requires finding closest points and in order to minimize this objective you need to do some sort of icp alternation between finding correspondences step number two and finding the optimal transformation we saw that in the in the, two lectures ago like that um this is called the icp algorithm and by now we should not be surprised um if i tell you that icp um can get stuck into local minima so basically icp computes closest points which can be wrong for example here notice that this is the result of running ICP to fit the simple mesh to this registration. And notice that the legs in the point cloud are crossed and in the registration, they are not crossed. Or for example, here, the hand is not really matching the hand of the point cloud. And the reason is that the hand points of the point cloud are most likely matched against the hip points of the of the uh, of the mesh and therefore you have wrong correspondences and you have some parts of the model that are explaining the wrong parts of the data so by now we should not be surprised and uh, we know that finding nearest points and using those correspondences get stuck into local minima so we're going to see like how we can use learning to um, improve this registration process. So in particular, we're going to see um, two types of models. Um, very briefly, non-parametric models that don't use um, a simple parameterization and parametric models that use a parametric model like simple, but they use training data and deep learning to learn the correspondences from the point cloud to the template of the simple model. There's a third approach that are uh, what I call hybrid. This is a very recent work, which uh, we um, we call like learn vertex descent, which is neither. And we will see these in future lectures, but not in this lecture. So let's start with this um, non-parametric model. So what's the simplest thing you could do? Um, you want to find correspondences, so you want to fit like a template to an input shape. And so what you could do is to encode the point cloud into a vector of features. In this case, is this epsilon of S. And then now, given a template and a vector of features, you can train a decoder that will predict the vertices in their location such that they match the input shape. So this is a very direct approach where the network needs to directly predict the vertex positions. Now, if you want, you could think that the network is essentially playing the role of the deformation model for the vertices. This F that we've been talking about that deform the vertices to get closer to the data is now encoded by a neural network. Now, this produces results that are better than ICP for humans because it's learned from data. However, this gets stuck into local minima and you need like at least 100 global rotation initializations in order to um, make this learned model converge. This model cannot get details from the data and the register template is not controllable because it's not the simple model, you cannot pose it and shape it. You could compute the simple model from it relatively easily, but um, it's not directly controllable. So one obvious thing is like, well, let's try to 
still keep this learning paradigm, but bring the parametric model more into the equation. So by the way, one of the reasons that this like model here does not converge so, so nicely is because the network here has is using global features for this input shape and it predicts all the vertices at once. And this is a very hard learning problem. Um, it's very difficult for the network to know um, how to predict all the vertices at once um, without making more local reasoning because you need a lot of training data of many different poses in many different shapes in order to generalize well. We, we will understand these concepts a bit better when we see the difference between implicit surface reconstruction methods and, um, and explicit ones. So one question we pose here is, can we learn to fit the simple model to the data? And can we preserve high frequency details if they are present in the data? Because if we can do this, we can make scans controllable and also very realistic. So in that work that we presented, um, I think um, one year or two years ago, um, it's called Combining Implicit Function Learning and Parametric Models for Three Human Reconstruction. So the goal is clear. We want to get an input point cloud and we want to be able to control the input point cloud with pose and shape. And for this, we of course need to register like a parametric model to this point cloud. So at that time, like it, the implicit surface reconstruction methods based on deep learning were starting and um, it was understood that they were much better at preserving detail than the explicit reconstruction methods. And again, we will understand this better, but just the intuition now is that these implicit reconstruction methods, they basically make predictions of where the surface is inside and outside based on very local evidence. And this allows you to train um, with data and the network needs to only look at local patterns in, or, in order to make decisions. And this allows you to capture better, like um, fine details because you don't need as much data because essentially you're making very local decisions. So the high level of idea of this um, model that we call IPNet is to combine like implicit reconstruction, which allows to capture details and um, simple model fitting. So obviously you might ask, well, why is this a good idea? Well, um, as I said, like implicit reconstruction methods are uh, learning based methods are better at capturing details and they can handle arbitrary poses. Whereas parametric models are not very good at capturing details because as soon as you go outside of the parametric space, um, yeah, you, can, you cannot represent this. And generalization to complex poses is also difficult because you need a good initialization. So essentially, um, the main problem of implicit reconstruction methods is that they are just static meshes. And you cannot do much with static meshes because you cannot change the pose and you cannot change the shape. And parametric models, like they can be reshaped and they can be reposed. Um, and so it just makes sense to see if we can combine the best of both worlds here. And this is the basic idea of uh, IPNet. Like, can we get an implicit reconstruction and from the implicit reconstruction somehow turn it into an explicit one by fitting the model to it? So of course the challenge here is that this problem at that time was relatively well understood. Basically there were good models to predict implicit surfaces from point clouds. Uh, for example, like the methods that from my group and also other groups like uh, like I IFNets or NDFs, neural distance fields or implicit feature networks uh, would turn a point cloud complete or incomplete or sparse or, or denser into a continuous implicit surface. Um, but the question is, how do you then fit a simple model to it? 
it seems like you're turning a point cloud into a surface and then what's the game? I still have to solve the registration problem. So the main problem is that ICP gets stuck due to bad correspondences and due to the fact that the simple model cannot represent cloth and hair and so on. So it's the objective is not uh, well minimized because the model cannot explain the data. So in IPNet, there's two key ideas. One is to predict simple as an implicit surface to make fitting easy. So it's sort of going the other way. Like you go from a cloth mesh into an undressed mesh, what we call the inner surface, such that this surface looks much more similar to the simple model than before. So essentially now the fitting process will be easier because the implicit surface doesn't have clothing, doesn't have hair, doesn't have these difficulties, and then fitting will be easier. And the second idea is to predict correspondences rather than using nearest points. So how do we do this? We train a network that consumes point clouds and um, there's different networks to do that, but <clears throat> one popular one is based on, um, it's called PointNet. And essentially at a high level, what it does is it processes the points the same way as a convolutional neural network processes pixels and um, and then you extract features from this. And from these features, then you can decode them into predictions. So here, what we do is like we train an implicit surface network that will predict three layers. One layer is the inside of the body. This is the undressed um, body. And uh, another layer that um, corresponds to the um, or not layers, let's, let's call them regions. There's one region, which is the inside of the body, another region that is in between the body and the clothing, and the second region, which is basically outside of the clothing. And you can train the network to predict for every point in space P, like whether it's inside the body, whether it's in between the clothing and the body, or whether it's outside. And in addition, you can predict for this point to which of the end parts this point belongs. And you can make these predictions for all points in space. This is what is called like now, goes under the name of neural fields networks. And the reason they are called like this is because they make a prediction for every point in space. And we will see that this simple idea actually turned out to be quite powerful. We will see this in a future lecture um, where we see neural fields and um, implicit surface reconstruction methods.